Okay, and what we will do is we will go and Okay, uh, in today's session, we will take a look at what is data model and why data model and uh, what is cardinality and types of relationship followed by this, we'll take a look at uh, what is data warehousing, data lake, star and snowflake schema. And then uh, we will take a look at what is active and inactive relationship. This is very specific to Power BI. So apart from this, uh, we'll take a look at uh, these topics, but uh, today I don't think so. Uh, I can cover all these topics, cross filter direction, automatic date tables, uh, how to create uh, date tables, how to deal with many to many relationship. So even uh, this, these uh, five topics, uh, I don't think so I can complete it uh, in today's session itself. We will see uh, whatever the best I can do, I, I will do in terms of uh, covering, uh, you know, some portion of the topics of these topics. Okay, so the, okay, what is a data model? So any idea, so anybody has uh, any idea about the data model? Data model is like a blueprint. Like uh, the architect, before you build a house, you need to, have a blueprint. Without a blueprint, if you construct a house, what will happen? So it is going to be a mess. Okay. Why it is it is going to be a mess? Because if you forget to keep some provision, and after constructing the house, if you realize that you made a big mistake, right, or you you realize that you forgot to keep a tap in your kitchen sink, you are gone. Right, so the blueprint will have everything in it, right? So the you know where the kitchen should be there, where the uh, bath bathroom should be, the restroom should be there, and where the bed master bedroom should be there, where the living room should be there, and which room, uh, uh, you know, which uh, how many number of taps you needed, uh, you know, say in the living room uh, you need a tap, or in the kitchen how many taps you needed. So when you have a blueprint, you will have a you know a big picture, right? Complete big picture. Okay. So in this uh, you know blueprint, so you will with the with the blueprint you will be able to understand so what you, about your requirements very clearly. But without having a blueprint, if you construct a house, a later point in time, if you want to make some alterations, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? Tell me, tell me, you know, just share your ideas. It's a simple common sense. Yeah? Let's say you don't have a, you say you did not have a proper um, blueprint. Now you constructed a house. A later point in time, you rely, realized, you know, you need to keep some provision. Simple example is in your kitchen, you did not uh, keep, uh, you know, two taps. You kept only one tap. But uh, in the overhead tank, right? In the terrace, you have two tanks are there. One is to... One is from your bore water, other one is from metro water. Okay, so but the tap at uh, present, what you have it in your kitchen sink is bore water. Bore water is a bit salty. Okay, and then you now after you constructed the house, after you kept every all these provisions, if you realize later point of man, I forgot to keep uh, the additional tap which is required to. Uh, pull the or uh, you know draw the metro water or get the metro water so in that case what will happen there is a major rework especially if you live in an 18 floor apartment and just because of you right so let's say you are in a um, first floor and but uh, that block has 18 uh, floors in it so you need to let's assume this way okay you need to uh, put a hole in from the top to till the end right or the other simple example is cable connection. So nowadays, everywhere, everyone prefer concealed uh, wire only. So in the, uh, let's say you have an Airtel network broadband connection and you are, as per your apartment rule, the cable should not dangle outside of your flat or on the whole apartment. Everything should get concealed. But in your house, you did not keep it. 
okay and uh, let's assume that all the 18 flows they did not give it what will happen so all the 18 flows need to break right they have to break each and every flow and then they need to keep uh, that one uh, but while breaking it there you know there could be chances the other um, tabs or electrical provisions which you kept it next to that right little uh, closer to that can also will get impacted while breaking it so there is a major river right? when you do the alteration uh, later after you construct the house if you want to do some kind of alteration it involves a major uh, river and the cost is very high and the impact we do not know i don't know how many of you are aware of this uh, story in chennai uh, somebody told them that you know the house was not constructed as per the astrological thing and then what he did, uh, he made some changes. While he, uh, while he was breaking the wall, somehow that pillar also, you know, they broke it. Entire building got collapsed. So like how you need a solid uh, blueprint before you construct a house, in the case of um, software world, before you're building any application, or any uh, web uh, development or doing any web development or any applications, we need to have a solid data model in place. So data model can also be compared to a roadmap, okay? So it represents the framework of what the relationship are within a database, okay? It, it basically, as part of the data model, we are identifying the relationship between the tables or amongst the tables. Okay, there are uh, three types of uh, data model. So one is the conceptual data model. In the conceptual data model, it is nothing but an abstract data model. So this is the preliminary step wherein, wherein we define what entity the system or the database should contain. For example, you join with the company, uh, let's say Cognizant uh, Technologies, you join or TCS company you join and now you are part of a project and they sent you to USA, your customer is in USA and you are sitting on their company, I, right? So it is your responsibility. Currently your project is in the data model phase. In the software development uh, life cycle, there are different phases. One is the first phase is requirements phase. You need to hold a workshop with customers and talk to various stakeholders, understand what is their reporting requirements, dashboard requirements from the analytics point of view, because you are a business intelligence guy. While talking to them, you will get to know at a high level, what are the entities, essential entities that are required in order to fulfill their reporting needs or their dashboards or to build our dashboard reports in line with their expectations. What are the tables are required? How many number of tables are required? What are the essential tables that are, are required? So identifying the essential tables and also you, know, you need to identify the high level business relationship between the entities. As part of the conceptual data model, we identify the high level business relationship between the entities. What is entities? Entities are nothing but tables. In the data modeling point of view, entities are nothing but tables. Let's say in the case of uh, grocery business, it needs to represent its data model. For example, a customer places an order and products appear on the orders. And finally, there is a cardinality. It is also called as relationship. What is cardinality? It is nothing but a relationship or the degree of relationship such as a customer can uh, a customer places zero or more order. So my customer base is 1 million. That doesn't mean all the, or each employee, each uh, customer should order it on a daily basis. Some customers, they order it uh, daily. Some customers, they order it once in a week. Some customers, they order it once in a month. Some customers, they order it once in a while. Some customers, they order it every alternative days. So, so in that case, uh, the, the degree of relationship, you know, zero or more, right? So the degree of the, the customer places 
either a zero order or more than zero order right so they can order one um, they can raise one order uh, two order three order per month they they might if you take a specific customer let's assume that right he ordered 30 times some customers we say they did not even order anything that month so order is placed by order is placed by you know one or more customers products appear on products appear on zero or more orders the same rule is applicable here though i sell 1 billion products not necessarily all the products should be sold in every day right and today out of 1 million products uh, only 0.5 million or 0.2 uh, million different products customers purchase remaining 0.8 million product they did not purchase so uh, order is placed by one or more customers look here order is placed by one or more customers but if you say an order if, if there is a record in an order table which means at least one customer would have ordered it right minimum at the minimum uh, at the bare minimum one customer would have ordered a order sorry an order should have at least one customer okay and placed and i uh, say order can so orders table uh, order is placed by one or more customers also right one or more so so here so this is one side this is many side a customer right so order is placed by one or more customers right so one to many relationship here the product product uh, products appear on zero or more orders but if you look at in this direction the customer places zero or more order so um, so without a relationship now the question is uh, why relationship needs to be created okay see a, a customer orders a product customer orders a product and your product belongs to a specific category and uh, the 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 product uh, can be located in more than one stores also for example walmart or other leading retail chain if you see they have 2500 plus retail chains uh, you know geographically uh, spreaded here and there okay they have 2500 plus retail shops are there across usa and across other places so that is what stores e store uh, under different category different products uh, are there and uh, the, you know these products can be ordered uh, by a single customer a single customer can order one product or more than one product sometimes they don't even order it and product also the same thing a product you know may appear in our you know the so some order the product may uh, appear in orders some products they may not appear in the orders at all on a specific duration or a specific uh, day or so so here there is a relationship here a customer orders a product and a product uh, you know is part of the categories and there is a business relationship that is what i'm saying in the conceptual data model while talking to the stakeholders business stakeholders you will get to know the uh, the business relationship between the entities what is the relationship between these two 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 a store, similarly a store can have uh, you know uh, um, one uh, zero or more orders right a store can have zero or more more orders sometimes uh, in, you know in specific uh, store they would have closed it hence there is no zero orders we don't sell anything recently we closed it Okay, and a zero or more a customer can order places zero or more orders, and this is the degree of relationship. Okay, one see basically one to many and one to one, many to one relationship uh, needs to be defined. But at the time of conceptual data model, which is nothing but at a high level, right? We identify the essential entities. What are the tables that are required? Entities, customer entity, orders entity, products entity. And then uh, we also identify the high level business relationship between. So how do I know, uh, you know, a, a customer places uh, zero or more orders while talking to the business stakeholders? Can you explain each customer uh, is ordering the products on a daily basis? It depends on the business. Uh, for example, 
if a customer, uh, if you take every household, uh, every day they buy milk, whether they have a kid or not, they buy milk because they used to take coffee or tea beverages on a daily basis. There are, uh, you know, the milk business, every that's a daily business. There are something, right? Uh, if it is a retail grocery store, not necessarily every day they should come and order it. So by understanding these business relationship between the entities, that is very much important. At a high level, we understand that well. And the next one is the logical data model. The logical data model, it is an extension of the conceptual data model. So in this case, uh, the database uh, modeler or architect, they moves on from the big picture of the conceptual model. In the logical data model, we start look at, or we will try to find out what are the attributes that are required or what are the attributes that we need it. Attributes in the sense columns. In data model design, we never say columns, they say attributes. So what are the, you know, so customers, if you say customers, uh, the key column should be there and his first name, last name should be there. Okay. And in the order of fact, customer key should be there because your customer key is there. Here also you need to have a customer key because it's a transactional file and order date key, which date the customer has ordered and which store the customer has ordered. We are selling products across 2,500 locations in which location, uh, which customer on which date they ordered under which promotion key, okay? And uh, how many units they bought it? What is the gross profit we made it? So this is where the logical data model, we go one step further uh, uh, and then we'll go and identify all the columns that are required as part of each entity. Entity is nothing but the table names. Okay, and also we add the, uh, and also we identify the relationship and define the business rules. Business rules such as the customer entity has at least one unique identifier. See, in this case, uh, this table should have, uh, uh, you know, unique value in it. For each customer, it should have only one record. It should not have more than one record for a single customer. Okay. Okay, so in this case, the products, the same rule is applicable. In a product table, for each product, you need to have only one product in it. If you have uh, the same product repeated more than once, what will happen? It leads to some kind of duplication. So duplication, we don't need, uh, we don't have to store, we are not supposed to store the duplicate records you know, in, the, in this kind of tables, like a customer's table and products table, right? So the, the, these are called like a lookup tables, the customer table and products tables are called your lookup tables, including stores and categories. Whereas the order fact is not a lookup table, it's a transaction table. Why we call these all lookup tables? These lookup tables will not get changed uh, as many times or it will not get changed more frequently, like how the transaction data will get changed. Okay. So every day, this file or the table will get inserted or updated or deleted with the records in it. So you sell, um, let's uh, take a simple example. Let's say you sell only 20 products. So oddly, you are going to, in, 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 you know, create, you are going to sell uh, you know, two more additional products, uh, probably in the next six months, six months down the line, you are going to sell uh, two more products. So uh, 10 plus to 12, 12 products at the maximum you sell it. And your customer base is 500. Okay, and the customer, uh, once you store it, uh, right, so customers, they will be, so you will get customers, uh, they say even on a daily basis, one or two customers will get updated. But whereas order fact, you know, on a daily basis. Some days what will happen? Uh, let's say, you know, you are getting customers uh, per month, right? At least three to four days only. And products, these tables will not undergo changes more frequently. You just, you know, so, so that is the reason why we call it a lookup table. And also the lookup table should have only the unique value in it. Okay, so the customer name is a unique value. Simple example is Aadhaar card, Aadhaar number. Other number is unique to 
each citizen i cannot use your aadhar number for you know to represent uh, my citizenship the aadhar each um, uh, citizen should have a unique aadhar your aadhar number is different my aadhar number is different similarly in the customer table each customer you are supposed to have a unique key this is this each the same customer key should not repeated more than once as simple as that the same rule is applicable here also for each product the product key should not get repeated which means the product key should be unique okay and similarly store key and categories but here if you see in this table we have the combination of all these tables key columns here product customer key product key category key and the store key one two three all the key columns or you know we put it here right so customer key so forget about the order date key and you just think you know you have a product key here okay product key something like that you just think that way okay or let me just make it now itself oh i cannot make changes to it because the product license got expired i cannot make a changes here okay fine you just uh, think that way okay so the order fact table should capture all the keys that comes from other tables hence we call these tables as lookup tables which when customers products categories and stores order fact is a transaction day to day transaction because the other tables will not undergo changes more frequently like how the order fact table undergoes frequent changes and also uh, to uh, reduce the redundancy we split the data and store it in different tables logically now the question is why should i have so many tables can't i combine all the tables into single table is it possible it's in a family in your family you have uh, six people are there brother sister uh, father mother grandfather grandmother all six people can live in a single room no each person need a single room right but practically yeah each person cannot uh, have a single room uh, unless uh, ambani and all okay um, thing is right um, the couples uh, the or the brother need a separate room sister need a separate room uh, parents need a separate room grandparents need a separate room so two or three three four bedrooms likewise when it comes to data modeling also we cannot store all the data in a single table number one reason is redundancy will will happen we don't want to have the redundant we don't want to have redundancy data should get stored redundantly in a table if we store the data redundantly it will consume too much of space on the hard disk especially when you are uh, storing million billions and billions of records you know in tables like this kind of transaction tables you are gone okay it will consume too much you just assume that the customer key uh, is there here by linking these two tables uh, uh, common key column customer key we can retrieve the customer first name and the last name listen very carefully this is not a rocket science okay and once you link it with the help of customer key and the order date order fact let's see your manager asking me hey, can you tell me uh, which customer ordered uh, i want to know the order number uh, hundreds customer name so in that case you have linked these two tables using customer key by you know with the help of well, you know creating the relationship between these two uh, columns or between the two tables using these two columns you should be able to easily retrieve these values okay you can retrieve these values instead if you keep the first name last name here what will happen your first name last name and uh, tomorrow you are you know let's say per day you uh, order it uh, five times each day you order it five times so your first name last name uh, five into 2 10 times per day it will get stored in the same table 30 days 
what will happen 300 records will be there okay unnecessarily it will 300 records will be there and each three on each record you will have first name last name your first name last name is uh, same right so hence this is a transactional table here a customer key can repeat more the same customer can key can repeat more than once but here each customer should have only one key why here the customer key can appear the same customer key can appear more than one time because it's a transaction file so same customer can order multiple times in a single day or you know in a throughout a week or throughout a month right hence your duplicate keys will be there for customer key but the combination of all the so we store, that's the reason we store you know we store all the key columns the number you know here the reason is if you want to get the first name and last name you know join this table using customer key do a look up uh, uh, you know on this column okay first name and last name for customer key is 100 is so and so you don't have to store it here similarly the same principle is applicable here so we are logically splitting storing the data in different tables and also we create the relationship between the tables and also we will see what what these kind of relations or the types of relationships here we see here this is the notation we use it and you know as part of the data modeling guys don't think only power bi developer they'll get uh, 15 lakhs or 12, uh, 11 lakhs per annum okay and um, even the data model designer talking is uh, today's topic is data modeling there is a separate designation for data modeler they are also called a data architect they are the one responsible for doing data model concept you know involving in the conceptual data model logical data model and they are the one doing the logical data model design and physical data model design everything will be done by the data architect please remember data architects are also most sought out skills they are paid very high salary since in power bi data modeling has to be done okay unless you do the proper data model microsoft power bi you know you will not do the filtering correctly since microsoft power bi dictates that the data model has to be created only then your report will show the accurate value one way it is good since they are dictating us to the data model now you are going to learn the data model topic also you can uh, probably uh, when you uh, once you get into a job and when you you know after two years or so right you will gain more uh, exposure towards doing any complex data model design you can switch over to data architect job also the pay is very high or you can do dual role okay data architect come business intelligence uh, architect da architect they do everything now let us understand this notation and most of the thing right you will find this kind of uh, notations so here uh, you know uh, 0 1 so what is this 0 1 so if you find the notation something like this 0 1 uh, a customer uh, you know so the uh, ask example so the driving license so a person can have a driving license or he may not have a driving license zero or one license you cannot have more than one license right you can have only one driving license you cannot have 10 uh, licenses so either he can have uh, one license or he may not have a driving license so in that kind of situation zero or one relationship so here the notation so one or zero with this notation the circle and one means uh zero is uh, you know this means zero okay and next one is this one uh pi uh, two. so it's a one to one there is a one to one relationship each person should have a single aadhar card aadhar number uh, for each uh, citizen should be unique only one each person should have only one each person each citizen should have only one aadhar card okay each other number should get assigned to a single citizen so the, if you see something like one to one see it's very simple right one one this is one zero so if you see crow fit followed by zero 
zero or more crow feet means more zero. so what is an example for this give me some real time example zero or uh, more the customer places zero order or more orders right that is the example for this and the next one is crow feet followed by one instead of circle one so this is the one is called one to many relationship a single customer can have multiple orders can order can place multiple a single customer can place multiple orders a single order can have multiple products these are all the examples for one to many any of you will take a look at this uh, you know in the in the later part of uh, today's session okay the next one is the physical data model i was talking about the logical data model and then the, the the next one is the physical data model in the case of physical data model we will identify uh, the column see here in this case logical data model we identified the columns that are required for each and every table name or the entity name next step is what is the data type for each column customer key is uh, let's you know it's a um, uh, string column okay string data type uh, with uh, with this uh, five or 10 and first name is a string data type string data type and width how much uh, letter should be stored string within the parenthesis specify 15 last name string data type likewise we identify the data type and the width of the uh, each columns values as part of the physical data model remember that so we are done with what is conceptual data model and what is logical data model and what is physical data model in the physical data model once they identify see it is an extension to physical data model is extension to logical data model same thing will be there but only thing is here you specify the data type string data type and uh, what is the size the size how much it should hold that's all okay that is what once they uh, come up with the physical data model they will share the model which they came up with the um, customers us customers or uk customers and they will see it and if they say no no the width should be 10 not 8 considering the future uh, we need to uh, we need to specify uh, some more space for the customer key To, to accommodate some more space in the customer key, increase the size of the width. So increase the width size. Okay. Uh, so once they finalize it, once they sign up, okay, everything is good. Then there is a guy called DBA, database administrator. He is the one responsible for creating all these tables into your database, okay, like uh, Microsoft SQL Server or some other database, other RDBM software. Let's assume that Microsoft SQL Server, the DBA is responsible for creating all the tables into your Microsoft SQL Server. Once the uh, once the physical data model is over, the DBA will create the tables in the database. Once they create the tables, then we can store the data and then we can start use it. So so this is the uh, flow. This is the simple process flow. we normally go through while building a um sorry we we go through while uh, developing a data model okay so first we identify the entities what is what are entities type it in the chat window let me see how many of you are awake or are you sleeping so identify the entities what are the entities what what are entities i told you no tables entities are nothing but are you sleeping guys this is nothing but tables entities are nothing but tables they are see if you are a brilliant guy you are, you are you are not going to watch my video okay if you are a average guy then you are going to watch my video <laughs> okay because um, you are wasting your time right you itself you observe it why you know so the so first we identify the entities that's what i mentioned here look here in this case we identified the entities entities are nothing but tables in the logical data model in addition to the entities we are going to identify the properties of each entity properties of each entity 
properties or attributes or columns of each entity and then we identify the relationship the third step third step is relationship okay and fourth one is map attributes to entities completely and then visualize the data in the report builder or report canvas okay and then assign keys as needed and determine degrees of normalization and finalize and vet it with stakeholders so these are the steps that we first step is conceptual data model second step is um you know the logical data model we do all these things and then visualize the data and then assign key as well so do we need to have primary key composite primary key do we need to have foreign key relation something like that we can do it and finally uh, once everything is done uh, we share it with our stakeholders our us customers once they say everything is good then the dba's responsibility to create all the tables in the production system okay got it so next we will take a look at normalization so as part of data modeling okay now the question is identifying how do we create the relationship between the tables so why we need to have multiple tables why can't we have the data for all these tables that are in a single table we cannot store everything in a single table so in that case we need to logically divide the data and store in different table so how do we uh, come up with uh, the right number of tables okay i don't want to store everything in a single table then why should i store uh, customer table separately in products at least can i combine these two things or can i combine these two things and can i combine all these three things okay in this case this one table two table three table i don't want to have oh, say only one table to hold all the information in it fine at the same time i don't have want to have so many tables so how do i design the optimal number of tables that forms part of my data model so there is some rules that you need to follow to come up with the total number of tables or something like that, okay the relationship okay so that is where something called normalization is coming into picture what is a normalization it is a database design technique so it divides the larger tables into smaller tables and link them using relationship let us assume that all these things in a single table what we are doing we are splitting it and storing the different tables so we divide the larger table into multiple smaller tables and links them using relationship that is what we do as part of normalization normalization is a database design technique so as part of normalization we decompose or divide the bigger tables into smaller tables and link them using relationship now the question is why the hell should i do normalization eliminate data redundancy and then it helps us to improve the data integrity and also it will overcome the undesirable characteristics something like insertion anomaly a date anomaly deletion anomalies i'm not going to discuss all these things and now let us take a look at the first normal form okay so okay how do i go about uh doing the data normalization i'll directly jump in there there are uh, three forms first normal form second normal form three third normal form in order to say that you have a proper data model design is in place it should comply with first normal form second normal form third normal form so what is first normal form all rows must be unique all rows must be unique all rows must be unique sorry all rows i'm just trying to put it here okay all rows must be unique and each cell must contain an atomic value atomic value means single value guys please wake up it's a very interesting topic and please concentrate here all rows must be unique each cell must contain an atomic value let's look at this table and tell me is this following this rule tulasi can you tell me all rows or you know all the rows whatever you see is unique
how about other sashes or vikas the simple common sense yaar what what do you mean by unique no all rules must be unique it is not the first rule itself violating here right your john is there fries and coke is there the same john appeared here and fries coke if you see these two records we have a duplicate we have a duplicate same customer name repeated more than once and same products for the same customer name repeated uh, repeated right duplicates it is not unique come on please concert see everybody has fun everybody has sorrows please concentrate here all rules must be unique but here it is not unique first rule itself violates each cell must contain a single value does it contains a single value in it please wake up guys tell me uh, does it contain single value yes this column has a single value in it right customer name has a single value but whether this column has a single value in it say yes or no see this column has single value so here only one value is there only one value only one value is there and how about product column yes right to let's see okay at last okay so here in this column we don't have unique value first rule is each row should be unique the same row should not repeat john fry scope is there john fry scope is there. repeating hence it is violating the first normal forms first rule and first normal form second rule is and each cell which is nothing but each column should have a single value should not have more than one but here we have more than one value hence it is absolutely violating the first normal form so how do how do i address this issue how do i address this issue in this case what i do is i'm going to introduce and another column if i let you know if i put order id along with this it makes sense so here order id is unique can we see any duplicate value here any duplicate value here no so john's order id is one the same john maybe you know these two guys are same but their order id is different so two days back he ordered fries and coke Uh, you know with the pro order id one the same john today he raised an order to buy fries and the same fries and coke uh, and its order id is three by introducing this column we made sure that each row is unique okay each row is determined by a unique key value so this order is different this order is different though the customer name is different same the order id is different okay now you tell me is that meets the first normal forms first rule yes all rows must be unique because we will have to look at the order id right so each row is unique supposing one the order id repeats more than once then it is violating the first normal form guys please concentrate okay okay the next one is okay it partially following the first normal form but but the second rule is each cell should have a single value okay here we have a single value in this column in this column also we can see a single value only but in this column you can see more than one value price comma co price comma nuggets comma co so now we need to see this one we addressed each row must be unique it was not there so by introducing a unique key column like order id we are able to address that first issue and the second issue now is uh, each cell should have single value in it so the, how do we do that here what is order id and uh, the customer name we are showing in a separate table and we are storing the products in a separate table but each uh, cell we keep only one product see fries in a one row and coke in a second row so overall we have 5 uh, plus to 7 records seven products for each product you store in a separate cell okay now the question is 
we have separated this single table into more than one table that is what i was talking about here right so why why can't we store everything in a single table we cannot store everything in a single table Re the reason is it should not it should follow the first normal form second normal form third normal form and so on so okay now i splitted a single table into more than one table okay more than one table now by looking at this table if i ask so who ordered this coke so how will you answer it is it possible to answer it no right so this one requires an additional column instead of customer and name if i say order id so here also you copy this order id so in price the price product we ordered in the order id one the coke also we purchased in this order only both these products we purchased but here you can see at you know duplicate value here let it be there but in this case uh, you know each order id should have a unique record in this table but whereas here it cannot be right because an, an order can have more than one product practically in real time scenario so in order id 2 uh, in this order they purchased more than one product in this order 3 they purchased two products okay now the question is okay so in which order which products they ordered it if i store only if i split it something like this bluntly what will happen is if somebody is asking you so which products ordered in which order id how do i know that okay introduce an order id column here now you create the relationship between these two tables common column what is the common column between these two tables can someone tell me god this is very important what is the common column between these two tables guys please wake up are you sleeping please switch off your uh, your uh, mobile or other thing tv everything order id very good uh, vishal order id is common between these two tables right so since order id is common between these two tables we need to create a link between these two tables using this column this is very important create a relationship between two tables using a common column why should i create a relationship between two tables using a common column supposing let's say you know uh, somebody else is asking you okay in which order which products that you ordered that detail you stored it in in hierarchical fashion uh, or the vertical uh, fashion fine but now you tell me which customer purchased uh you know which all customers purchase fries and coke so how will you answer it so for that you need to link these two tables because this table only has customer name in it if somebody is asking hey can you tell me order id 2 uh, is raised by which customer i want to know the customer name in this case you have the order id here too you know with this you can see this customer id sorry order id in, in order id 2 two products purchased by whom so by linking since you have a relationship between order id and order id so it will go and check two is here okay mike unless you create the relationship between the two tables in a common key column you cannot retrieve the lookup value this is the lookup value and similarly fries uh how, how do i know the customer name for this order order number 3 so 3 if we go and since we have created the relationship already between order and the order id between these two tables 3 and 3 uh, if you map it and uh, if you do a look up go and look up in this table 3 yes what is the corresponding customer name john you can tell quickly john okay so now you understood you know I, how to create a relationship between the tables how do we create a relation between tables you need to identify the common column between the two tables with that common column only you can create the relationship number 1 number 2 is why should i create a relationship between the two tables you cannot store all the wells in a single table supposing uh, for example in this case the in in my second table i have order ready in products my manager wants to know the customer name 
that detail customer name detail was available other table so in that case what i should do is uh, once i create the relationship between these tables using a common column in this case it is order id i should be able to retrieve the corresponding value from the customer name also right okay now it is in first normal form we removed the redundant record first and then what we did how did we re remove the redundant record john john was there we did not remove it actually we address the uh, du duplicate record issue so in that case we introduced the order id by introducing an order id column we are able to address this partial uh, partially now it is satisfying the first normal form but still uh, right uh, there is another problem each cell should have only one value but here we have more than one value so for that purpose what we did we split this table or divided this table into multiple table in this case two tables but here products i stored it, uh, or each product i stored it separately now it is sort of satisfying first normal form because product cell or the column has single value in it but the problem is uh, which product ordered in which order id if somebody is asking i don't have any clue so hence if you put the order id along with this you, you should be able to tell uh, which products were ordered in which order id and also order id in order id is common between these two tables hence you created the if you create a relationship between these two uh, tables with this common column order id you can retrieve the customer name from here right so this is a lookup table this is not a lookup table this is a transaction table you just think that way okay now it is in first normal form here uh, if you see here uh, we don't have any redundant value we don't have duplicate values order id is unique and here duplicate is there but each cell has only one value here we don't have more than one value in it right so that issue also we addressed duplicate where records we addressed it and then we made sure that each cell we have only one value atomic value in it very good now we are able to solve the yeah, issue right uh, okay the next one is second normal form okay if a database must be in second normal form it should first satisfy the first normal form and then there should not be any partial dependency all non key columns must be fully functionally dependent on the key column maybe it is confusing with this example straight away we will try to understand this definition okay here i see that yeah, you know uh, we we don't have any duplicate records okay and we don't see any um we don't see any uh, you know we don't see uh, multiple values stored in each column okay good it is sort of satisfying the first normal form but what uh, the second normal form says is okay um there should not be any partial dependency there should not be any partial dependency okay so this table is not in to second normalization Uh, second normalization form second normal form this table is not in second normal form why why all non key columns must be fully functionally depend on this thing the which means uh, you know uh, there should not be any partial dependency look here student id course id so this student has taken course id 1 this student the same student has taken course id 2 So here, these two columns are composite key, unique value. The combination of these two, you can you can uh, you know uh, you should have unique value. For example, student ID uh, is one, and he has taken a course one. The same student, he can take more than one course also. So in this case, he has taken two courses, and student ID one took course ID one. the combination of these two should be unique please remember this the combination of these two should be 
you need. So similarly, the combination of these two. So if I put one, one, one more time, do you think uh, that is a uh, that is going to meet the first normal form? No, right? Duplicate. Yeah, duplicate. Very good. So one, two, two, one, two, three, three, five, three, three. Okay. And here, okay, the next thing is, okay, this is a composite key, fine. But here, uh, each student says the same, st so this student, uh, you know, has taken course ID1. This student also opted for course ID1, right? So fine. Here, the student ID, sorry, the, the, yeah, student ID is, uh, so the course ID is dependent on the student ID. There is a complete dependency between these two columns. And if you look at this column course fee, uh, the fee is depending on the course ID, depending on the type of the course that you take. If it is a data science course, this is the sum fees. And if it is a Python course, this is sum fees. And Power BI, there is sum fees, right? So different course, different fees. But the fee is depend on the course ID. There is a dependency here between the course fee and course ID. There is a, you know, uh, uh, we could see, uh, you know, uh, the, this column is fully depending on this column. But the course fee is not fully depending on student ID. It is course fee is not fully dependent on the student ID, isn't it? It is student, the course fee is indirectly, sorry, the student ID is, uh, you know, indirectly related to this one, but it is no, course fee is not fully dependent on student ID, right? Hence, there is a partial dependency. There is a partial, so there should not be any partial dependency. But in this case, we have a partial dependency. Hence, this table is not in second normal form because the course fee is only dependent on the primary key to determine the course fee, right? So you can do it with just one column. So, the, right? So, why you need to have one more column here? So, in this case, what we do is, uh, this is, these two are com key column. The combination of these two columns forms this primary key column, composite key column. This is a non-key column. So what we are doing is, since this column is fully dependent on this one, we are splitting this into two tables. Student ID and course ID will keep it separately. Course ID and course ID will you know, sort separately. Okay. So both tables do not have any partial dependency. If you see, there is no partial dependency. The course fee is fully dependent on course ID and uh, this the course ID is, sorry, uh, yeah, this two course ID is fully dependent on the student ID. So this one is belongs to this one, this one belongs to this one, or we can say this way also. Student ID is fully dependent on the course ID or course ID is fully dependent on the student ID. So now we addressed the second normal form issue. So now we can see that after addressing it, it is satisfying the second normal form. For a table to be in a second normal form, it should be in first normal form. In addition to that, there should not be any partial dependency. Remember this. This is called your second normal form. Next one is the third normal form. There should not be any transitive dependencies. Okay. So what is third normal form? If a table or if a relationship or if a table to be in a third normal form, it should be in first normal form and second normal form. In addition to that, there uh, should not be any uh, transitive dependencies. What do you mean by transitive dependency? Or any non-key column depend on, on other non-key field. Any non-key column depend on other non-key field is called your transitive dependency. It should not be there. Any non-key column depend on, on other non-key field. Okay, so, so it should not be like this. For example, look at this table. Now you tell me which one is a key column. Type it in the chat window. Which uh, column is the key column here? Primary key, foreign key, you know, right? What is primary key and foreign key? 
Aadhaar number is kind of uh, example for the primary key. Each employee, or sorry, each citizen should have only one unique Aadhaar number. Your Aadhaar number should not be same as mine. Right? So, the, that, the primary key is Aadhaar number column. The employee ID is the key column. Please remember the employee ID is the key column using which you can uniquely determine your row. Okay. In a, in a same company, more than one employee's name can be similar. For example, uh, John. John is a very common name, right? So more than one person name uh, can also be like John. Then how do you know this John is different from this John? Using the employee ID. If you go to any company, they give employee ID, right? With the employee ID only, you can uh, determine uh, uniquely the employees. Okay, hey, I want to know uh, the John who lives in Tamil Nadu. Right, so okay, with the help of state and the zip code, uh, you can find out. But in the same uh, state and the same zip code, what if we have more than one Johns are working in my company? So employee ID, this is the key column using which only we can, each employee is given unique employee ID. With this employee ID only, you can uniquely identify a record in a table, which means this John is different from this John. How do you, you know, distinguish between this John to distinct, you know, distinguish this John to this John? Because of the employee ID. Okay, so th this is a non-key column. Which one? This is a key column. This is a non-key column. These are all non-key column. All these are non-key columns. Okay, the employee name is a non-key column. It is fully dependent on employee ID. Very good. Employee zip also, right? Employee zip is somewhat, uh, it is, okay, we can have it here. So John lives in this location, whereas the same John, same, uh, um, so, so, sorry, whereas the other employee name is also John, who lives in, in this zip code. Right? Supposing I have another John who lives in the same zip code. So for him, for John, 60020, which means that John is different from this John. Okay. So, okay. So, even employee zip is also, uh, you know, the, the, depends on the employee ID. Fine. But tell me one thing the employee state, employee city, employee district. First of all, you tell me Chennai is anywhere directly dependent on the key column employee ID? No, right? And Gwalior is directly dependent on two? No, right? And this city has directly dependent on no, right? But the Chennai, Gwalior, Bangalore, you know, these values directly depending on. So, this is a, so these three are non-key columns, including this one, right? So, so yeah, so th these are the non-key columns, okay? So, including uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, except employee, rest of them are non-key column. All uh, non-key columns should fully dependent on the key column, but uh, call non-key column should depend, not, should not depend on other non-key column. So in this case, em employee zip is a non-key column. The employee state is also non-key column, non-key column, non-key column, but all these three columns are all these three non-key columns are dependent on this non-key column. It is violating the third normal form. Hence, we are going to split this table into two different tables. Uh, and we are going to have these three columns, a single table. And we are going to have these four columns in the other table. Thereby, we make sure that all the non-key columns are not dependent on the other non-key column, because in this case, it is a key column. We have defined as a key column. So all these non-key column is fully dependent or fully dependent on this key column. These two non-key column fully dependent on this one. Hence, we addressed the third normal form also. Hope you understood what is third normal form. Uh, obviously, obviously, you need to revisit my video. You cannot understand everything in, you know, it's some, something like, uh, even when we watch our favorite uh, heroes movie, 
uh, he said let's you know it's going to be it, the movie duration is 3 and a half hours each and every scene you cannot remember it right some scene you forget when you watch it second time you will remember it the same thing is applicable here also you watch it one more time and okay the next question is why do i need to have the data model okay boss you, so far we discussed about uh, how to do the data model and in order to the data model we need to follow some uh, normalization rules now first normal form second normal form third normal form we have seen it now you tell me why should i uh, you know why data model should i use it so okay now the question is look at this visual here so in power bi everything is relationship relationship relation in order to create the relation between the tables you need to have the data model design okay and uh, for example uh, if you don't have a data model in place in power bi you cannot do the slicing and dicing okay what do you mean by slicing and dicing to analyze the data in a different ways Okay, or often arbitrarily, that is not possible if you don't create the relationship between the tables. Okay, and uh, now I will show you this example. Um, so now I head to the Power BI desktop. I just click on this one. I will load few Excel files here. Ah, to load 92 records super fast okay we so i just give some meaningful name uh, i guess the name is not meaningful here rename it as sales or fax sales to rename a table okay good the speed is reasonably good and next, I just uh, open an Excel workbook and I'm going to say, and uh, dim product. We should have selected location, any of. I will cancel this. So this is my uh, location dimension. I just loaded two files. These two files got converted as tables by default. And if I click on this 
pivot. So far, we have seen uh, this data view. And now I just click on the model view. So this is called your power pivot. Okay. But here, the again, you know, this confusion is there. Uh, we will do a little bit cleaning here. So 10.30, we'll wrap up by 10.30. It's 10.25, uh, right? I know you feel sleep pay uh, if I take more time. And I just remove these columns. Uh, okay, let it be there. I don't have any issue with this. This is the problematic thing. So what I am going to do is I am going to transform and use first row as it is. So location key, the row header became a column header. Good. So for this reason only I came here, I just close and apply. This is the power editor. I did a little bit transformation. Ah, takes this much of time and go to the data model view. Okay, this is my data model view. If you look at here, there is a line between these two table. You can see a line between these two tables. What, why, you know, a line or link? So why this link is created? And if I keep the cursor here, hover the cursor here on both sides of the table, which one is getting highlighted? Which columns are highlighted? Type it in the chat window. Let me see if you are watching here. If I keep the cursor, which two columns got highlighted? Hello, hello. I think none of you are there next to the laptop, right? Hello. Yeah. Location key, right? Yes, location key. If I keep the cursor here, both tables, you can see location key, location key got highlighted. That means the common column between these two table is location key. Did I create any link? No, right? I did not create any link. Power BI has a capability to identify the relationship automatically and create it automatically. It is because the common column names between the tables. Location key and location key has the same name. Hence, it says, okay, this is the one side and this is the many side. So see, look on this side of the table, you can see one. On this side of the table, we can see star. Star means many, one to many relationship. So this, uh, in this table location key, we can use this uh, dimen uh, loca dimension location tables, location key, to filter the fact sales table. Please listen very carefully because even if you go to the net to understand these returns will take uh, you know quite a time. So, so, so how this relationship is helpful, I will show you here. With this example, you should be able to understand. I just clicked on this visual. Uh, this is called your matrix. So this is called your matrix. I just clicked on it. The moment when I clicked on automatically, it got dragged here. In the report canvas, it got dragged. So here I just move it to the desired place and I just resize it. And then if I go here uh, in the lot of mosquitoes are there. Location name, I just drag and drop it here. And then in the pack sales, if I drag and drop uh, which column, the sales amount, if I put it here, Why it takes this much of time? For 100, 100 records and all, if you take this much of time, you know. got it? So now, yes, so don't, you know, there is some, uh, you know, problem here, missing value or some key column there, miss problem here. You ignore this one. You can see Bangalore, how much sales we made it in total. In Chennai, how much sales we made it in total. In Delhi, how much sales we made it in total. You can see that. So overall total is grand total. 456k okay got it fine now if i go back here to my model and if i remove this link between these two tables how do i remove this keep the cursor on top of this link right click on it delete it okay delete it
And if I go to my report, can I look here? The sales amount, the total sales amount is repeated here. Which means this value comes from which table? This value comes from which table? This is important concept. Please concentrate here. This value comes from where? Location on the C R here. I don't know, you know, guys. <laughs> when you get into real time project, they will squeeze you like anything. Okay, if you you know if you become a blab, you know, like this. See location name come. You know, we have dragged and dropped from this one. I just show you one more time. See, look here. What I did here. This is my matrix visual. To see what columns that I used it, you can see it here. Location name. Look here. So here you have the location name, and then sales amount. You don't have to see this one also. Simply you go to the location name and drag and drop it here, and here sales amount you drag. You just drag and drop it. But is this showing the correct value? It is not showing it because the, I removed the relationship. Now you understood. The, you know how the importance of the relationship between the tables without if you don't have a relationship or without relationship your power bi visual will not show the correct result it is not doing the filtering if you want the filtering to be happen you need to have a relationship between the two tables okay i will explain i will give you one more example so that you will be familiar with what is filtering what the hell filtering is all about look here so this is what is happening country id country so this table has only these two columns listen very carefully if you learn it you can master it the rest of the concepts so here also country id is there what a common column between these table country id isn't it but here quantity in addition to this we have quantity says but here we have country fine country name is there fine so if i use a matrix the matrix if i put uh, the country name and then sales the matrix if I, you know if i drag and drop uh, country and sales united states it should uh, look at for so what will happen is yeah you just think this way if i create a matrix where in say assume that these two are different tables i just uh, drag and drop country in my matrix drag and drop sales column in my matrix like how i did it here ideally i should have taken the same example any of fine so what will happen what will happen by default this is what is happening when i drag and drop into a matrix or table what happens is it does the filtering it does the filtering because there exists a relationship between these two tables based on the common column in this case the common column is country id okay so what happens is the moment when you drag and drop sales into a matrix along with the country id or the country name what will happen is first it will uh, the power bi will look at this lookup table this is one side this is many side and the first record it will go and uh, and then what it does is it picks up this value and then it goes and checks are there any record which is similar to us all the uh, uh, you know records which were highlighted in red are related to us and then what it does is first it does the filtering and then it does the summation it adds all the values 2503 plus 13500 plus uh, 6550 Okay, and three thousand five, four thousand, a hundred, and four thousand hundred and ten. Okay, and then once it does the sum for US, next it skips to the second record, jumps to the second record. The moment when it goes to second record, uh, in this table the country column or the country ID filters the sales tables. Country ID column, right? So here Australia it goes and checks where and all Australia is there. First, you know, highlight that one, filter that only that record. Rest of them we can ignore it, and then you apply sum on this column. So you can apply sum on this also. 
but in our case we just dragged and dropped country and sales only into my matrix remember that and the next what will happen it will go to the ge german and then uh, it will go and check only one record is there and some is not required fine next new zealand new zealand nothing is there simply it will ignore it so this is what filtering so how you need to talk which language you need to use it the the country dimension table filters the sales fact table in order to do the correct filtering what is required what is required come on your relationship i think you are all sleeping you are not motivating me you are making me to sleep only when you have the relationship between the two tables that is what i have shown right so far only when you have the relationship between the two tables the filtering can happen like this otherwise the filtering will not happen common yeah relationship don't say common relationship should be there between the tables if you don't have the if you don't create the link or relationship see now i create the relationship if i go back and see here look here it is doing the filtering for bangalore this column comes from which table tell me quickly type it in the chat window na come on here see when okay i'll tell you this one see when you select this visual i'll just show you one thing when i select this matrix on the right side if you see here what all the columns that i used in the matrix gets highlighted on the right side guys i will tell you one thing very clearly please go to my website and watch you know each and every video okay and then you join this class okay so let's say if, if i say day after tomorrow we have a class and day after tomorrow what i am going to cover that topic i will let you know that topic you go and read it or, or watch my video of my previous batch in my website and then if you join this class live session it will be really useful this is not movie okay you can, simply if you give money and watch it you cannot understand it okay now you tell me this location name column comes from where from where vishal vishal can you tell me look up table right yes very good so this location name comes from this look dimension location and the sales amount comes from where from this one from sales amount comes from fact table so the dimension uh, location dimension tables location name column filters the sales amount in your fact sales sales fact sales table sales amount got it this is how you need to talk at the time of interview forget about interview every day status call is there with american customers they will ask you like this can you explain you how you know how it does the how it did the filtering you need to explain it so location dimension location tables location name column filter the fact sales sales amount column simple this is a language this is how the language you need to use it this is the fundamental thing you need to understand it okay it's already 10:38 please watch today's video i will upload it later sometime tonight without fail going forward you treat every session is very important guys it is going to be your future okay and uh, if you want to expect uh, one second i'll just pause this because i'm uploading it in 